Hello everybody and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be presenting our Back to Basics series, Tools for Navigation in AutoCAD. Our presenter is going to be Victoria Studley and moderating will be Stephen Bissett and myself, Volker Coco. And we are very happy to see you attending this presentation. A little bit about us. I'll start off with myself. I am a Autodesk Technical Support Specialist on the West Coast, Lake Oswego, Oregon. And Victoria, who is presenting, is in our Manchester office. She's also a Technical Support Specialist. Moderating and helping to answer questions will be Steve, who is also in our Manchester uh, New Hampshire office. So uh, we're happy to be here and we will get started shortly. We do have a few housekeeping items which we'd like to take care of real quick. First one is go ahead and feel free to leave any of your questions in the chat window. We're going to answer those as best as we can. Uh, some of those answers we'll even uh, address after the webinar and Whatever we can't answer in the chat window, we'll definitely try and address uh, after the webinar. Additionally, this session will be recorded, and the links it says here will be made available. They've already been made available, actually, in the uh, registration reminder, which you received about an hour ago. But you can also get those in the post-webinar survey as well as, it says here, the chat window, but basically the window we had up before the webinars where those were appearing. If you do need those, we can always paste them in there. So again, welcome to uh, this session of the Autodesk Help webinar series. Um, we've had, I think we're on like webinar 42 or so. And these are just the last five that we've had, our last one being the Working with Layers Continued webinar. And uh, we've had several dealing with 3D and another one coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, but check these out. They're all available on our YouTube channel on the AutoCAD Exchange uh, uh, YouTube channel, uh, playlist being Build Your AutoCAD IQ. So one thing we started promoting a couple of, uh, three weeks ago, I think, was how you can influence the future of AutoCAD releases. Uh, we always get people saying, hey, I'd like to see this in AutoCAD. We are, they've sent in a support request for that or a wish list item or uh, we need to get this changed. Uh, there's a uh, problem with the product, whatever. Um, you can join what is called the AutoCAD Customer Council. And this is just a, um, a place for you to give feedback to the AutoCAD development team. Uh, this helps create future releases and also gets your input on changes or ideas for, for new features for those releases. So why participate? Well, like I said, uh, you can have, um, actually I didn't say this, <laughs> have access to early ideas. Uh, so um, uh, this is what the product team is thinking about doing for the next release and you're going to be able to see that. Uh, and then you will also be able to give your input on that as well as get that feedback addressed. This is a great uh, um, uh, thing <laughs> that Autodesk is doing to get your feedback. So um, I would really encourage you to get involved and email this autocad.beta at autodesk.com or the autocad.lt.council at autodesk.com to get an uh, invitation to participate in the AutoCAD Customer Council. Uh, just as a personal note, pri note prior to a Joining Autodesk, one of the things I did was participate in the beta programs, which is very similar to this. And uh, it's, it's a great way to keep up and um, help get your ideas out to the developers. All right, um, one more 
item here we need to cover or should cover is the Autodesk Knowledge Network. We are in product support, so we do like to point this out. Uh, many of you have maybe visited here. This is where we have uh, downloads and articles, uh, not just for issues or troubleshooting, but uh, service packs that may have come out. Uh, educational software, which is available for free. Uh, file viewers for AutoCAD drawings and sharing those drawings. Uh, right this week, we released, um, in addition to the Hotfix 1 a couple of weeks ago, we released a Hotfix 2 yesterday, which is available, which addresses some issues with uh, AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, as well as the AutoCAD-based products. We also, uh, just to let you know here, I've pasted a couple of quick links, one specifically for AutoCAD and another specifically for AutoCAD LT. To take you directly to that page where you can uh, find resources uh, for learning, for troubleshooting, uh, for information on the application as well as all those downloads. This is a very, I, it, there are a lot of resources here. It's a great site to be aware of and to do a quick search for uh, things you may have a question about. So, um, actually, kind of blew ahead on the slide here. We're going to cover this week's agenda in a moment. I would like to throw out a few polls here, real quick like. Uh, many of you are familiar with these, but we do like to know a couple things. One of those being, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? And typically, uh, we get quite a few who have attended in the past, uh, so this must be working to some extent. It uh, looks like we have about 75, 76% right now who have joined us prior to this. Uh, the rest having uh, said, yes, this is new to us. So we hope it's going to be a good experience for you. We'll go ahead and uh, close that and just kind of show you the uh, results here. There we go. So those kind of popped up there. It's a pretty good number, pretty good even number, or odd, I guess. Go ahead, and I've got two more coming up here. So the second one is, we like to know which, uh, what type of audience we are presenting for, uh, in part for future webinars, but also, um, you know, are you working with AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT? The verticals on the uh, architectural, MEP, or electrical side, or even AutoCAD Civil 3D or MAP on the geospatial InfraWorks side, and of course, if you work with something else than AutoCAD. So it looks like about um, the majority of working with core AutoCAD. Everything we try to show in these webinars, unless we indicate otherwise in the description, is typically uh, going to be available in both uh, in any version of AutoCAD. If it works in AutoCAD LT, uh, then uh, we're going to be make sure it works in the other applications as well. So, some good numbers. Again, welcome to all of you. All right, one final poll, and this is more on my, one of my last slides here. Since we did present uh, or talk about the customer care. Uh, Council, um, see if anybody here has uh, joined this or again, I'd, I'd encourage you to check it out if you have any interest at all in providing feedback um, or if you do provide feedback all the time, this is a great place to do it where it goes directly to those developers and the product team. So uh, roughly, well, about 12% right now. I'm going to go ahead and close that poll and uh, let you guys quickly see what uh, what we have going on, how many of you have and have not. So again, I'd encourage you to check it out. All right, so uh, let's take a look at this week's agenda. Um, as I stated, Victoria will be presenting and she is going to cover 
the view ribbon panels on the user interface. Um, so we have a lot of different navigation tools in AutoCAD, and, and that's what this is about. And navigation could be anything from uh, using the mouse to pan or to um, uh, creating named views or using the orbit command. Victoria is also going to cover coordinate systems. Uh, so what is the difference between the world coordinate system and the uh, user coordinate system? Uh, most User uh, users who are new to AutoCAD, um, you know, have questions about this great topic. And then some basic navigation like pan, zoom, and orbit. Some tips and tricks there uh, about those tools. We we use them every day, but there are different ways to access them, and uh, in some ways, it's even faster. There's also the navigation bar and view cube, which are uh, typically on by default. And then adjusting the UCS or user coordinate system, either using the icon or command line. And then talking a little bit about the view manager and saving views for use in model space or layout uh, uh, paper space views. So pre there are some preset ones. You can create your own named views. Very powerful tool, saves a lot of information. And this is going to be some cool stuff that Again, Victoria will be presenting just about now. Victoria, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to you because this is your show. Thanks, Volker. Hi, can you hear me all right? And let's see. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we sure okay. can. I can. Excellent. All right, and can you see my screen? Indeed. Thank you. Excellent. Hi, so uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, Volker, for the lovely inter introduction. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And let's talk about some navigation tools in AutoCAD. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about is uh, just navigating um, where to find some of these tools. So if you uh, click on, oh, let me go down here for a second. Uh, I am actually in the drafting and annotation workspace, which should be your default workspace if you're in uh, regular AutoCAD. So from here, uh, up on the ribbon, I'm just going to click on the View tab, and it should open up uh, a series of panels here that you can use for navigation. Uh, now, some of them are missing. So the first thing I'm going to do is right-click in this gray space off to the side. And I'm going to go to Show Panels, and I'm going to bring in Views, and right-click again, and I'm going to bring in Coordinates, and I'm going to bring in a third one, and that is Navigate. And I just wanted to show you some of these tools and where to access them on the ribbon. So the first thing here is uh, your Viewport Tools and these three buttons right here will turn on and off some of the uh, basic navigation tools. Your UCS, your UCS icon, which is the X, Y that you see down here in the lower left. I'll put it down here. Uh, this will toggle that on and off. Your view cube, which is typically in your upper right. This toggles this on and off. And then your navigation bar which is this bar over here on the right-hand side. So that toggles that off and then back on. So if you like those and they're missing, or if you don't like them and you want to turn them off, that's where you can do that. So the next piece here is the View Manager, and we'll get into detail on this a little bit later, near the end of the webinar. Uh, but just so that you know, it is under the View tab and then the View panel there. And if you click on View Manager, you can get right into it. And then if you click on this handy drop-down, it shows you all of the views that are available in your drawing, the current drawing that you're in. So then you have your model space viewports here. You also have coordinates. So here are some quick, um, quick buttons for some of your UCS manipulation tools. Uh, this right here will, uh, well, we're not gonna talk about palettes today. Uh, let's jump over a little farther to the navigate panel here. And this here just has some quick picks for your uh, orbit commands and then your zoom commands. That's pretty much what we'll be focusing on today. So 
What I'd like to talk about next is uh, coordinate systems. And if you're not familiar with them, uh, there are two uh, major terminologies that you'll want to uh, familiarize yourself with, and that's the WCS and the UCS. And those are acronyms that you'll hear thrown around a lot. Uh, the first one stands for World Coordinate System, and the World Coordinate System is fixed, so you can't change it. Um, but it is your X and Y plane here. And it just orients everything in your drawing. Everything is placed in reference to it. So imagine that you have a table that is nailed to the floor and can't move, and then you're placing a piece of paper on top of it to work. Your UCS, which stands for User Coordinate System, is a movable Cartesian coordinate system, which is X, Y, and then Z. And you can rotate that to suit your needs. So if you need uh, to work at a 45 degree angle or a 30 degree angle, uh, or you need to work, you need to rotate your x-plane so that it's straight up and down instead of left to right, you can do that by manipulating your user coordinate system, your UCS. Now in order to do this, you have the UCS icon, which is down here in the lower left. You can click on this to manipulate it. You can right click it, or you can use the UCS command at the command line. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Um, before we get into anything complicated with the UCS, let's uh, dial it back a little bit and we'll talk about some easy ways to just navigate quickly around uh, an existing drawing that you have. Um, so the first thing that we'll talk about is pan. And you can either use the pan command, so I'm just going to type that in at my command line, and you'll see that it pops up as pan, but the shortcut for that is P. So all you have to do is type in P, enter, and you're in the pan command. And you'll see the little hand pop up there. And now pan just allows you to move around the, the, uh, the drawing without zooming in or out. Uh, you can also, uh, to get out of the pan command, escape. And if you have a middle mouse button on your mouse, uh, hold down that middle mouse button, and that is also a quick way to get into the pan command. The next thing would be zoom. And you can see just by, uh, I'm going to scroll in and out with my mouse wheel, uh, pulling back on it will traditionally in AutoCAD uh, zoom out and pushing forward on that middle mouse wheel will zoom in. You can change that if you'd like to. Um, I know some uh, certain programs have it set up the other way. Uh, I know Inventor, for one, is uh, backwards. Uh, Fusion 360 is also backwards from the way that it works in AutoCAD. So if you're familiar with another program, uh, you can change that. So another way to access the zoom command is at the command line. So if you type in Z, you can type out the whole word, but Z is your shortcut. So enter. And at the command line, you'll have a whole bunch of options uh, for different types of zoom. So if you take a look at this drawing, I've, uh, I'm pretty far zoomed out. I can zoom out a little farther, even while I'm in that command. Uh, that middle mouse button scroll still works for a basic zoom. But let's say I want to zoom to the, ex um, well, let's say we want to zoom to the limits of my drawing. I can type in A for all or pick it from the command line. And that will zoom to the uh, coordinate limits here that are set for this drawing, which is different from zoom extents. So zoom extents, I'll just get back into that command. If I type E for extents, you'll see that zoom extents tucks right in on just the geometry in the drawing, which is helpful if you have a really wide um, limit on your drawing space. Uh, say you're working on a very small plan near zero, zero, but you plan to eventually work off in the distance. So you've set your drawing limits uh, fairly large. You can use zoom extents to just zoom around what you've already drawn early in that drawing process. Now, if I go back into zoom and I say center, it's going to prompt me for a center point. And so let's pick on uh, one of these um, cubicle banks. We'll just pick the center of this one, roughly. And then the second thing it's asking for is a magnification height. 
So you can either enter it manually or you can uh, pick two points on the screen and it will pick the height that you uh, that you zoom to and it will zoom directly to the center of that. So your next one here, um, let's talk about zoom previous. Let's say I want to, you know, maybe I didn't really want to zoom in on this and I want to quickly get back to exactly that zoom level that I was at before. I can use zoom previous, so that's Z and then P, and it'll jump me back to the same uh, zoom level that I was at before. Back into the zoom command, we can go into zoom scale. This allows you to set a scale for your, um, your zoom factor. So let's say we want 0.5, and it will zoom us out 0.5. Let me can zoom and say two. Oh, sorry, zoom scale and say two. And it will zoom us in two times closer than we already are. Back into the zoom command. Window will let you pick a window that you want to zoom to. So let's say I want to zoom into uh, just this elevator bank here. And maybe I know that I want to zoom in from here and precisely to here, just to include that portion. You draw the window and it zooms right into that uh, little area there. Okay, the last one on the list here is zoom object. And this one's one of my favorites, because if you have uh, something that you want to fill the screen and you're pretty far away from it, let's zoom way out. Let's say I want to zoom in on this particular chair right here. I can pick on that chair hit enter and it zooms me right into that chair so that it fills the screen. So I'm going to use zoom previous here. And then uh, Volker, I know um, Volker and I were having a discussion about the zoom dynamic command uh, previously and to be completely honest I have never used this one before uh, but Volker has and has found it handy in the past so I'm going to let him talk for a minute about um, Zoom previous, or sorry, Zoom uh, dynamic. Volker, are you there? Okay. Yep, I am. I wasn't sleeping, honest. Um, <laughs> Zoom dynamic is uh, pretty much a legacy uh, function for the um, Zoom command. It it can still be used uh, effectively in very very large drawings. Basically, um, if you're familiar with the aerial view, which was around for up until a few releases ago, uh, and even if you aren't, it, it, it allows me to select an area when I'm zoomed out in, in the drawing, put a box or a window around that area, and then just simply by right mouse clicking or hitting enter, it zooms quickly into that area. And uh, really, the last time I most effectively used this command was AutoCAD release 12, okay, and that was at that time, I had 12 megabytes of RAM on the computer and video cards. I, I can't even tell you how little RAM that had. Um, you know, just weren't very powerful for the graphics that were required. And um, this allowed you to quickly zoom in to the large drawings without having to worry about a regeneration of the drawing. Um, may not make much sense, me just having explained it like that, but um, we can certainly do a little bit of a, a demo afterwards. Uh, I see um, Victoria is trying to um, work with that. Um, I'm trying. But, I um, don't know if I'm succeeding. Yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> I think there are more effective ways nowadays to work with the command, but if anybody is interested, I can certainly show it after uh, after your presentation. So, uh, Thank, yeah, thanks, yeah, it's Walter. not used much anymore. You bet. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's move on to, well, yeah, let's move on from Zoom. Um, we're just going to show, let's see, okay, some of the Zoom and uh, Pan commands that I did just show you are available in this navigation bar off to the right. Um, some people find this handy, some people find it distracting and just close it. Um, but 
Uh, if you're looking for a quick way to access these and maybe you're not in this uh, view panel or view ribbon and you know, you're in a different ribbon and you don't have quick access to those and you prefer to pick your icons, pan is right here. And then you have zoom extents, but if you click the drop down, you have all of those different zoom options. You also have some of your orbit options, which I'll jump into a 3D drawing in a second and uh, show you a little bit of. And where are we? Ah, and then this, uh, this little, if you can click that little button down in the right hand corner, there are some other options here uh, to display on the navigation bar. So if you only want to see your pan and zoom and you have no use for orbit or show motion or steering wheels, then you, know, you can uncheck those and just maintain the ones that you like. You can also, um, you can also dock this uh, on the top left, the bottom right, etc. Okay. All right, uh, and then over here we have our view cube, and we've used the view cube a little bit in some of the 3D webinars, um, but it's uh, I find it to be a very useful way to navigate. Um, so you have some named views, and these are preset views, which we'll talk about in uh, the view manager in a little bit too. Uh, but the preset views just can't be changed; they're just they're associated with uh, they're associated with um, particular views on this cube, but uh, if you watch the drawing, actually, let me jump into the 3D table here. I'll go back to the top view, and it's a little easier to see in a 3D model um, how the view cube uh, turns the model. So if you click on these arrows, you'll see that it shows us a front view. If you swivel around, you get the right-hand side, the back, the left, back to the front, if you keep clicking the top one, you'll eventually get to the bottom. Oh, doesn't want to. There it goes. Okay, and there's our bottom. If you're ever a little bit disoriented with this, you can always click on the home view here. It's a little home icon. And the default home view is the southwest isometric. Uh, but if you primarily work in 2D drawings, what you can do is set up your view the way that you like it. And right now it's showing me a perspective view. Um, I'm just going to click on this little drop down arrow in the lower right of the view cube and expand the menu. And this gives us a series of options here. So I can switch this back to parallel so that things aren't all distorted. And say I am working in 2D. Um, I'll do this in the other drawing here. And I want the home view to be my top view. What I can do is say set current view as home. And now if I'm in one of these weird views that I really don't want to be in and I've gotten a little disoriented, I can click home and now it will bring me back to my top view. And you can do that with any uh, view. If you have a really weird one that you want to set as your home, you can do that as well. Uh, you've got your view cube settings here. And this just shows you uh, where you can put it. You can put it in the top right, bottom right, top left, bottom left, just depending on where you want that to appear, where it's easiest for you to use. Uh, the size, I typically leave this as automatic, but if you want a really tiny view cube or you want an enormous view cube, you can uh, use a slider there. I'm just going to leave mine on automatic. Um, let's see. So you can customize this a little bit. Uh, you can customize the menus that show up with it. And then uh, orient view cube to current UCS. We'll, we'll see how this, uh, uh, we'll see how adjusting the UCS changes how the view cube looks uh, in just a minute here. And if you do some really weird things to your view cube and you're not crazy about what you've done and everything's out of whack, you can always come into this little menu and hit restore defaults and everything will go back to normal, including that home view, uh, if you preferred that southwest isometric home view. So I'm going to click OK. Um, your Oh, another cool thing about the view cube here, uh, it has this compass around it. And the compass 
can be controlled by the uh, or the direction of the compass. Let's say your north direction uh, on a site plan might be off to the northwest of um, where it looks like it is right now. That that makes sense. I'm uh, okay. Let me go back. Um, if you want to turn the north arrow, you know, 45 degrees, let's say, uh, there's a system variable called north direction, and it allows you to set where that north arrow is pointing in your drawing. So I'm just going to set that at 45 degrees. And do I need to regenerate it? Hmm. Well, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But that is the north direction system variable. Maybe I can take a look at that a bit later. Um, we needed that awkward moment. We really did. That that was really <laughs> underwhelming. I was expecting it to uh, to swivel around for me, uh, but it did not. That's okay. Uh, we'll move on. If you do want to switch this, um, if you do want to switch the view really quickly by 90 degrees, you can use the arrows here. And it'll just flip the view 90 degrees while maintaining whichever top view you're in there. Um, here we go. Okay. And then here, uh, this little menu is very handy, uh, I've found anyway. Um, if I get into a weird UCS and I want to get back to my world coordinate system, this is where I usually go. There's a little drop down here, and if you create your own custom UCSs, they'll all appear in this list as well, and they'll help you navigate between uh, custom UCSs. So, speaking of that, let's talk about the UCS command. Um, right now, we've been working with the UCS uh, just straight up and down like this. Uh, this is, right now, the UCS and the WCS are the same, but there might be some need. Uh, let's take a drawing like this where we have our uh, elevator bank off at a 45 degree angle. And maybe we want to orient that UCS to match those objects. Now you can use the UCS command or you can click on the UCS. And if you want to move it from its origin, you can uh, right click on the UCS and it will bring up this menu. And these are all the options that will be available in the UCS command as well. So I'm going to do all of this from the command line. Type in the UCS command and it brings up, again, look down at your command line for all of your options. It's going to bring up a series of options for us to manipulate the UCS. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the origin. And this, um, this is the default when you enter the UCS command. So it says UCS, specify origin of UCS. And maybe I want my origin to be at the corner of this elevator uh, encasement here. So I'm just going to pick on that little point. And then you'll notice that my UCS is now free to move. And at the command line, I'm being prompted to pick a point on the, the x-axis. Now my traditional x-axis would be that 90 degree line straight across, um, but I want my x to be along this line right here, that bottom line of the elevator bank. So I'm just going to pick the corner. I have my O snaps on, so I'm going to pick the uh, end point there. And then it's asking for my y. And my y can either come down this way or this way. And so depending on which side of the X axis you flip to, that Y will jump from one side to the other. So I want it to go straight up here. So I'm just going to pick any point along this line. And now my UCS has been changed here. And take a look at the view cube. It's now tilted at a 45 degree angle. So when I move this, sometimes it can get a little confusing. So again, right here, you'll notice that this says unnamed. What I'm going to do is flip back to my top view. 
All right. So now you'll notice if I orient my top view so that it looks normal, uh, my whole plan is now flipped at a 45 degree angle. And maybe I don't like that. Maybe it's distracting. Um, maybe it's really difficult to draft this way. If you want to get back to that WCS, just click on the little drop down here and pick WCS. You can pick on your top view again and it'll rotate you back to where you originally were. So back at the command line, UCS. We can also, uh, let's say, we can also use the object option. So if we want to align the UCS with an object, we type in OB and then let's zoom in on something here. Um, let's pick, we'll stick with the elevator bank for now. Uh, let's just pick this line here and I can align my UCS with this object here, this line. And that flips it quickly and you'll notice I don't have to enter my X and Y axes. It automatically, you know, it's one click, you pick that object and there's your new UCS. Let's say I like this one and I want to work in it more than once, but I want to, I want the ability to flip back and forth between that uh, world coordinate system and my custom UCS here. If you click this drop down, you can click on new UCS. I'm sorry. Uh, where are we? That is not what I meant to do. Awkward moment. Hmm. Okay, let's go back into the UCS command. And from here, here we are. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so from the UCS command, uh, we can go into named. And so that's the NA command from within UCS. And you'll get these three options here. You can restore a UCS that's already named in the drawing. You can save one or you can delete one that you don't need anymore. So I'm gonna pick save. And I'm just going to call this uh, Elevator bank. Okay. And now this will show up in my drop down list as elevator blank uh, elevator bank. So now if I switch back to my WCS, there's my world coordinate system, my X and Y look normal. I can pick that elevator bank again and it will jump right back to that point there. Now, if we go back in here and say you have a bunch of different UCSs in your drawing, and I go into that uh, NA for named, and I wanna see what's available to me, I can type in question mark and then hit enter. And it will list, it'll uh, pop up with the AutoCAD text window and it will list all of the saved coordinate systems in my drawing. So you see that elevator bank shows up there and it gives me all of my information about that. It's origin, it's X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. So that can be helpful if you have a dozen of them in there and you're not sure which one you're trying to pick. Okay. So let's say that I- Hey wanna, Victoria? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I just want to interrupt for a moment. Um, so actually you had one of our major awkward moments in our startup PowerPoint where I uh, mentioned that whatever we show in AutoCAD LT or uh, AutoCAD, unless otherwise indicated, we, we make sure that it works in both LT and AutoCAD. And um, this is my mistake and I apologize on the PowerPoint slide I should have mentioned that this um, the um, 
the view cube itself is not available in AutoCAD LT. Everything else we're doing here is available in AutoCAD LT, just not that particular function. And you would have to use the UCS command to uh, change those particular views um, the way that Victoria is displaying that. So um, that that's my bad. I should have been clearer on that, and it didn't dawn on me until we started getting questions in okay. the chat window about um, that uh, view cube not being available. So uh, I, I'll let you continue. That's right. And, well, can uh, I can I ask you um, the view manager? Is the view manager available in LT? Yes. So for the okay. view command, yes. All right. Then all, um, all, this, all the other information, have... the nav bar, all that is available. So. Yeah. Then then this will be great. Um, I have a uh, a really easy um, way for you to work with these that uh, circumvents the command line. If you'd like to, um, uh, if you're looking to switch really quickly between views. Uh, so with that said. I think, did I get through everything? Yeah, that looks about right for 2D. Um, so actually one more thing. If you want to get to a previous UCS, you can type in the, the UCS command. And if you type in previous, it will bring you back to that world coordinate system. If you want to just pivot on an X, Y, or Z axis, What you can do is pick some of these uh, really easy um, entries down here. You, you could, yeah, okay. So let's say we want to rotate around the x-axis, and we want to rotate a number of degrees. Um, the default is 90 degrees, but you can rotate anywhere up to 360 degrees, which I guess would bring you back to where you started. But if you're just looking to rotate 90 degrees, these are some pretty easy um, uh, tools to use. So around my y-axis, 90 degrees. Around my z-axis, 90 degrees. And then again, if we want to get back to that world coordinate system, uh, UCS. And then inside the UCS command, world is uh, the default here. So we can just accept the default, and it'll bring us back to WCS. OK. So let's go back to our view panel on the ribbon here, and we'll talk a little bit about the view manager. Uh, now I have a few views that are already saved in this drawing that we'll use. Um, but the first thing I want to do is show you how to create a new view. So the new one, I just want to make sure that I don't have it saved in here. I don't. OK. Let's keep using this elevator bank as an example. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use the command line. Uh, for those of you who are using LT and don't have access to the view cube, I'll show you how I would get back to that custom UCS. So I enter my UCS command. I look at my named UCSs. And then I'll say restore. And then I know that it's called elevator bank. And it brings me right back to elevator bank here. Now, if you don't want to do this, um, let's say you want a, a way to save this particular view, maybe at the same zoom level. Maybe you don't want to be you know, way out here. And um, maybe you'd just like to see the elevator bank on your screen. This is where the view manager comes in handy. So I'm going to click on the view manager here and open this up. And we have uh, our current view is always at the top here. And that will tell you what your current view looks like. Your model views are things are views that you have saved previously. So um, I believe Volker has used this drawing in the past. These were some views that he saved to demonstrate particular commands, align, lengthen, rotate, scale, stretch. Um, your layout views are for paper space. So you can save particular views that are zoomed into different areas of your paper space setups. And then 
you also have preset views. And I talked a little bit about these earlier. Your preset views are the ones that are associated with that view cube. So you get your top, bottom, left, right, front, back, and then four isometrics. So from here, um, what I'd like to do is save my current view. So what I'm going to do is click on new here. And it just takes the current view settings that I have, um, the zoom level and everything associated with it here. Um, and I'm just going to call it elevator bank again. And still shot is, um, you do have the option for uh, recording walkthroughs and that sort of thing. Uh, let's just leave it at still for today. It's just a static uh, view that we're trying to save. So this here is your current display. If, um, if say, you were trying to save a view that was a little smaller than this, you could pick define window and then pick the exact area that you want to save. Um, but we like the way it is now, so we're going to keep that. You can, let's say, ah, here's what I wanted to show you, the uh, UCS option here. Now you can either say that this is your world UCS, and it's going to jump that back to the default. Um, world coordinate system, but we want to save that as elevator bank so that we can work in that 45 degree angle. Uh, so this view will remember that. And then there are some other options. You can adjust your live section or visual style, but we won't get into that today. It doesn't really have much to do with navigating. So from here, I'll say OK. And then you'll see this elevator bank populate in the model views list here. So it, I believe it is set current, but I'll just make sure by clicking the button. I'll say apply and then OK. And then we have our model view. And you'll see that it shows up in that list up in the uh, ribbon panel there. And if I click the list, uh, let's take a, a look at a couple of Volkers. We'll take a look at stretch. Oh, no. OK. I don't know where. Oh, I think I deleted some of the things. Uh, Yep, yeah, I did. All right, that's awkward. Let's look at a uh, top view here. There we go. So this will look at our top view. And just to demonstrate, uh, note that we are in the world coordinate system here, your WCS. And if you pick on that elevator bank view, not only does it zoom you right into that elevator bank, it does also rotate your UCS to the named UCS that you saved. Okay, so I believe that's all I have. Uh, oh wait, no, we were going to talk about 3D. I'm, I almost forgot. Uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to show you in the 3D uh, model that are easier to illustrate here. Um, one of them is 3D Orbit. It is a useful um, navigation tool if you're using, if you're either working in a 3D model or say you just need to navigate one. And uh, a lot of programs use something very similar, so it's good to know how to use it. Uh, here, you can either use the 3D orbit command, and you'll see this weird little swivel symbol show up on the, uh, on the screen. And then you can use your left mouse button to just move that around. However, um, you can just left mouse button click and shift. Oh, not shift. What am I doing here? Uh, here, I'm sorry. Shift middle mouse button. Press down on that and uh, swivel around there. And this is one of Volker's tricks that he showed me. Um, with your mouse button, if you get zoomed way far out, uh, if you double click on that middle mouse button, it will zoom to extents for you without having to enter anything at the command line. So one more thing that I wanted to show was, where is it? OK, uh, down here in your status bar, click on customization and there's an option for dynamic UCS 
And if you click that, it'll bring up your dynamic UCS icon. Uh, the uh, command line, uh, the command for this is UCS detect, or you can use F6 to toggle this on and off. And what it does is it snaps your UCS uh, to whatever plane you hover over. So let's say I'm drawing a line here. You see how it detects that particular plane there? My UCS is actually switching. Uh, take a look at the view cube there. Um, I don't know if you can see it well. But that front view on the view cube switches to left and it pivots and so that I can draw on that plane dynamically. So if I come down here, it has to be an actual plane. There we go. So it will detect those planes for you. That comes in handy uh, in the 3D environment only. So those are the only two things that I wanted to show you in the 3D model. Um, and then we're back into the 2D here. I'm going to use my zoom extents to zoom back out in that model. And then I'm going to use my UCS command and just accept the default for world. And now we are back to where we began. All right, Volker, I think that's all I've got for right now. Do we have any questions? Uh, well, we've had quite a few. Most of them we've answered in the uh, chat window. Um, and, by the way, thanks for that great web uh, presentation there. Um, I'm going to uh, okay. just, uh, the last question we actually had uh, was, are the UCS settings saved with AutoCAD in general or with the drawing file? Um, both, in a way. Right? Properties of the UCS. Um, actually, no, they're all saved in the, in the drawing file nowadays, aren't they, Victoria? I, I believe they are saved in the drawing. Yeah. Um, there, are yeah. some things yes. that are, there are some things that are universal, so you'll always have, um, for instance, uh, your, your world coordinate system uh, will always be that. Um, that doesn't change. It's static. Uh, but if you're saving named views, um, if you're saving named UCSs, I should say, uh, those particular um, named UCSs are drawing specific. But if you had a need for them in multiple files, I would recommend saving a, a template file to start your new files from that have those UCSs named, uh, those named UCSs already saved in the template file. And that way you'll have them even uh, when you first begin a drawing, so you're not creating them over and over again if you use them all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it certainly did, uh, well, at least for me. Um, we just had a question here. Um, I'm going to answer it partially, and I'll let you add on to it. Is, um, uh, oh, just like, what is the most efficient way to rotate a UCS in a viewport? And um, I'm going to say whatever works best for the end user. Uh, you know, any, everybody works differently with AutoCAD and how they use commands. Um, uh, so I think it's a comfort level for whoever's doing the work. But uh, Victoria? It is. Um, um, can you just... So I, I should have mentioned this. Uh, I didn't spend any time in paper space here um, in, your, in your layout tab. Um, but if you activate a viewport, you'll still have all of those tools available to you. Uh, so if you are using the full version of AutoCAD, then you'll have that view cube. Um, if you're using LT, you'll still have that navigation bar and you'll still have the UCS here. So you can still click on that and then right click it. And all of those options for manipulating your UCS still pop up and you can use them. Um, so let's say, uh, let's say I want to rotate my X axis. Well, you know what, let's do what we did before. Let's, um, yeah, we'll create a new UCS based on uh, an object. Then we can pick a particular line and you'll see that swivel just like that. Uh, you can also use the UCS command right in there. And um, let's say we want to get back to that elevator bank. Uh, UCS. You can type that in. 
and there it is. It's a little difficult to see in here. Uh, I can zoom in for you for the sake of the uh, presentation here. Um, but that did show up right there. And then if we go back, hmm. so it, it will change that UCS though in model space if you're changing it through the viewport. Won't it? If you do it that way. Hmm. Yes, it does. Hmm. Volker, do you know, can you apply? Oh, sorry, I'm on mute oh. here. Oh, um, I'm, 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 I'm going to get back to this one in a moment. I do. We have five minutes left, so I just need to oh, yeah, go ahead. take care of housekeeping here and one quick poll, and then we'll answer uh, as much as we can um, on the um, uh, on our uh, questions there. So let and I with this one here, um, I would say we really didn't prepare anything. Um, in Paperspace for this particular presentation, but if it's something that people want to hear more about, um, maybe navigation particularly pertaining to layouts and uh, viewports, maybe we can do something in the future. Yeah, you can not save UCS, uh, the UCS per viewport as well. So there, yeah. um, um, I'll pop up the command in a moment. So let me uh, just uh, take care of uh, business real quick and then we'll get back to um, back to uh, answering whatever questions we can, okay? So we do, in the slide deck, have some additional resources, obviously a link to the AKN, uh, and uh, some information directly concerning the UCS, controlling it, uh, the view cube, and the view manager, very powerful, okay? There's also a screencast, uh, which, um, uh, I'm not sure. Did you do this, Victoria or oh, Steve? Or that is Steve's. Um, if you want to see a really okay. cool AutoCAD animation, uh, it's a 3D fly-through of a 3D model that um, that Steve created, and he said, "Hey, you know, throw this in at the end. It's not. Um, it's a little uh, bonus piece if, cool. uh, if if you're interested in the 3D navigation." Steve. Steve's really good with that 3D stuff, so check it out. Um, hey, coming attractions. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about working with blocks. Uh, this is a, um, a return to a uh, previous webinar, one of our first webinars, so it will be different. It's not going to be a complete uh, um, rehash, and actually this is reused content with these. So we're going to be talking about uh, the... Um, uh, uh, <laughs> con uh, um, Content can't explorer? spit out the word here. Uh, tool content palettes. Explorer? No, not content explorer. The uh, um, tool palettes and design center. Wow, that took a while. Sorry about that. We're going to then that. follow that with a, um, a third dimension uh, series. Cover all the express tools. This is uh, primarily for AutoCAD. And then after that, finally, we will have a webinar on working with AutoCAD blocks. Our, um, uh, creating AutoCAD blocks. Um, again, check out our landing page for upcoming webinars. This image here is out of date, but the webinar uh, page uh, schedule is up to date. You can also leave uh, questions in, on the landing page. There's a um, feedback link, uh, would be about right here, at the, right above the video itself, where you can access our uh, YouTube videos right here from this landing page and get all this information right off in one place. Uh, so leave information or feedback for the current, this webinar, any future webinar ideas, suggestions. You can also email us at autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Please be sure to put build your AutoCAD IQ uh, in the subject so that we know which webinar team this goes to. So we do have some more Q&A, but I do have one final poll. We need to know if you got anything out of this webinar. So did you learn something in this webinar? 
And um, oh, this is nice to hear, Victoria. Uh, we have about 95% of the audience saying yes, they learned something new, 96. I'm so, so um, happy to hear that. That's good because we really hate, <laughs> yeah, we hate wasting people's time. So um, let me go ahead and close that and just share it real quick. And share, there we go. So. Um, having said that, I realize we have not uh, answered a lot of the questions uh, in the chat window. We ran a little long. I do apologize for that. We'll take a look at these and uh, we'll uh, see about posting some of the answers on that feedback page that I pointed out. Um, we try to usually leave a little bit more time, but uh, there was a lot of good stuff here. so. Um, Hopefully we can um, uh, see you again next week, and we thank you for your time. We know it's valuable. So thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Steve. Oh, yeah, thank you, everybody, for joining us.